Hello everybody, my name is Shubhajit Banik and I'm a lawyer. The purpose of the channel, as I say always, is to make the students comfortable in the examination hall to think and understand from where the question is put. Please like, share and subscribe. It will help me reach out more students. We can all jointly help each other. Okay. Today's topic is the powers of the President of India. It's on request from a subscriber. Okay. We'll not go by the articles, but we will go by the concepts. So basically, there are eight powers. Trust me, by the end of this lecture, you'd have recalled a huge number of powers. It's difficult, but I'll make it easy to you. Right? So there are basically eight powers. We use simple words. Executive power, legislative power, judicial power, rulemaking power, okay? financial power, military power, emergency power, and last one, miscellaneous. 4 plus 3 plus 1, executive power, legislative power, judicial power, rulemaking power, 4, financial power, emergency power, military power, 7, gone. and last one, miscellaneous. Miscellaneous is always the last one. Okay. So when we take up the executive power, it's of three types. Year, remember the word year, E-A-R, why? E means executive action. A means appointments and R means removal. Clear? Executive action again would be say simply put executive action of the government of India of the union is always in the name of the president and all contracts by the union or state is also in the name of the president. These two are not same. The first one the executive action of this, the, the union of India is in the name of the president is article 77 and so far the contracts I said it's article 299. Just remember executive action of the union and contracts and fitting into contracts is always in the name of the president. Gone, E gone. A appointments. The 12 appointments. You can recall, it's easy. Eight persons and four offices. Eight persons plus four offices. What are the persons? First, Prime Minister and the ministers of the Union. Okay. The Attorney General of India, the Comptroller and Auditor General of India, the judges of the Supreme Court of India, the judges of the High Courts of the State the governor of a state, the election commissioners and a special officer for the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe. Except for the last one, the others are linked up. I go slowly. The prime minister and the ministers of the union. All right. After that, what comes? The attorney general of India. Right. Then the comptroller and auditor general of India. All right. Then judges. Judges of the Supreme Court of India. Then Judges of the high courts of the states, then the governor of every state, right? Then the election commissioner, and lastly, the special officer for the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. Of the offices, the four, remember India is comprised of the various different states. So, interstate council, it will be easy for you. Interstate council, okay? Then the Union Public Service Commission, Finance Commission, and a commission for languages. Interstate Council, Union Public Service Commission, Finance Commission, and a Commission for Languages. That's 12. Let us sum it up once more. The first one, the President of India, the second one, and the Ministers of the Union, the second one, the Attorney General of India, the third one, the Comptroller and Auditor General of India, the fourth one, the Judges of the Supreme Court of India, the fifth one, the Judges of the High Courts of the State, sixth one, the Governor of every state, the seventh one, the Election Commissioners, the eighth one, the special officer for the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe. The four offices, India is formed of various states, so interstate council, Union Public Service Commission, um, commission Finance Commission, and Account Commission for Languages. More appointments. So far as the R part, removal is there, the power is magazine. Remove the magazine, please. Magazine, MAG. What is MAG? The ministers, the Attorney General of India, and the governor of every state. Right. Easy. Ministers, the Attorney General of India, and the Governor of every state. So, executive power is gone. Now, take us. Let's take up the legislative power. Legislative power is in two folds: one when the Parliament is there in session, and when the Parliament is not in session. Okay. When the Parliament is in session, the power to summon, prorogue, and dissolve the Parliament is with the President of India. He has the, the power to make the opening address, power to send the messages, and the power to lay before the Parliament. The statements and the reports, example, the annual financial statement or 
the report of the Comptroller and Auditor General of India, right? Sum and substance. And when the Parliament is not in session, during the recesses of the Parliament, he can enact the law by way of ordinances. We have discussed that earlier, so it seems easier to you, as if you've heard somewhere. The legislative powers are mainly twofold. Firstly, when the Parliament is in session, and secondly, when the Parliament is not in session. When the Parliament is in session, he has the power to summon, prorogue, and dissolve the Parliament. Number two, he has the power to make the opening address. Number two, three, he has the power to uh, send messages. Four, he can lay before the Parliament, say before, say, the annual financial statement or the report of the Comptroller and Auditor General of India. And when the Parliament is not in session, in the, in the recesses of the Parliament, he can enact law by way of ordinances. Right. Now we talk about the judicial powers. The judicial powers are two folds. One, to grant pardon, and the other one, to consult with the Supreme Court of India. The pardon, this power of the President to grant pardon, understand, pardon is a benefit granted on other. So P is there. Pardon is by the President. P is there. So there is a power. The P is there. So once you know all the P's, go jump to the word R. Let, I mean the letter R. The three types of R's in pardon. What are there? Reprieve, spite and remission. All right. And the last one, commutation. So these are the four ways a pardon can be granted. The R is hidden in the pardon. What are there? Reprieve, respite, remission and a C that is commutation. I'll explain. Reprieve means the execution of the sentence is suspended. Respite means unless a sentence is given. Remission means the character is constant but it is altered. It will as a form. Rigorous imprisonment for one year to rigorous imprisonment for six months. Okay? And commutation means of a lesser kind. Say that sentence, it becomes a uh, life imprisonment. Easy. And so far as the power to consult the Supreme Court of India, that's basically to say that if there's a question of law or fact that the which the President of India feels that it should be consulted with the Supreme Court of India, he has a power to do so, right? So basically pardons and the consultation with the Supreme Court. Pardons again, RRRC, R means reprieve, respite, remission and commutation. Basically reprieve means suspension of the execution of a sentence, respite means a lesser sentence, remission means character constant, but we scale down. Example, uh, rigorous imprisonment of one year becomes Rigorous imprisonment for six months and commutation of a lesser kind. Example, that sentence go is now after after commutation it becomes uh, imprisonment for life. That's all. And the other one was consultation with the Supreme Court of India. So we have covered up executive powers, legislative powers, judicial powers. Now the rule making power. What's the rule making power? See, the president has the power to lay the procedure for joint meeting of the houses of the parliament. Then if someone is elected as a member of parliament and also in the legislative assembly of the state and his seat in the parliament becomes vacant, this is by way of a rule by the president, made by the president. Clear? Your MP and an MLA, then your, the seat in the parliament is vacant. This is by a rule making power of the president. Then again, the transaction of the business of the union and the and the how it is done by the ministers, it's all, I'm using simpler words, is also by a rule making power of the president. Then the members of the UPSC and uh, the conditions of service is also by the power of the president, the rulemaking power of the president. So basically these are the rulemaking powers. The first, one, the first one was the joint setting of the board the houses of the parliament. Then the procedure to be followed is by rulemaking power of the president. Then uh, if someone is elected in the member of the parliament as also as the member of the legislative assembly of the state, that the fact that the seat of his seat in the parliament lies vacant is by a rulemaking power of the president then the transaction of business of the union and how it is done by the ministers of the union is also by a rulemaking power of the president. Then say the members, number of members of the UPSC and the conditions of service is also by a rulemaking powers of the president. All right. Now we go to the financial powers. The financial powers basically is that uh, annual financial statement which has to be laid down. Okay. Then the financial commission, that's part. We'll discuss it in detail when we talk about that in a separate chapter. The finance commission and then the distribution of the tax part and the granting aid to some states. That is again a financial power. We'll talk about it. Let's keep it in mind what I'm trying to say. That first one, the annual and the, the annual financial statement, how it is laid, then the finance commission, that part, right? Then the, the distribution of taxes to some states and the granting aid to some 
that's the technical part we'll discuss it later financial parts now we comes to the emergency part emergency provisions we had talked earlier the emergency part is that he can declare the he can promulgate the emergency due to that that part was war external aggression armed rebellion when the parliament when the president of india is satisfied that uh, there's a grave emergency due to the security of threat to security due to war external aggression or armed rebellion he can by proclamation declare emergency okay that declaration of emergency or a failure of constitution machinery or financial emergency this can be done by the president and in those cases the first case in the executive power of the union extends to giving directions to the state how the executive power is to be discharged that part then in the failure of constitution machinery when the the president takes up all or any powers of the state and of the executive powers of the state or of the governor that part we discussed earlier i'm just wrapping it up and to declare the financial emergency that's all military powers military power means see military powers he is a supreme commander of defense forces but the president cannot declare war remember the president cannot declare war this power to make the law is to declare war and to make peace is with the parliament of india that's the fundamental thing you have to remember right and lastly was the miscellaneous what is miscellaneous is academic now earlier it was that that uh, when there was a transition from the government of india act 1935 to the provisions of the constitution of india difficulties were popped up so to tackle those difficulties the president has the had the power and has the power to make to pass orders so that is the miscellaneous power of the president all right so if you recall correctly the eight powers we have discussed now by now the eight powers are executive power legislative power judicial powers rule making powers then financial powers emergency powers military powers and the miscellaneous power if you rewind and listen to a particular group of power i mean the particular power and how is it discussed it will be easier for you the rest of discussed essentially the powers of the president so any time a question is put to you say a tricky one what is common between an interstate council attorney general of india and governor of a state straight away all are appointed by the president all right so these type of questions you can answer so who has the power to lay the annual financial statement before the parliament the president all right so explain the differences between reprieve reprieve respite and remission again you know that so what are the types of pardon a president can grant you know that easy it's not so difficult pay attention follow the method methodically if you approach it's easy to understand and easy to recall well before i wind up stay safe stay healthy and stay indoors it's a lockdown period right now right a unique one for us but if you have liked this topic and the way of dealing with the powers of the president please do like share and subscribe help us let us help each other right thank you